Hello, in this session we will discuss about spherical harmonic functions and the spatial quantization of angular momentum. Uh, since last two sessions we have been discussing about the spherical harmonic functions. In this session we will discuss about their exact nature and how they look and how they vary with respect to various variables and the spatial quantization of the angular momentum. We will discuss uh, also this one in this session. Now the angular moment, the spherical harmonics uh, uh, is represented by y l into ml and it is a function it is a it depends upon two variables that is uh, variable theta and variable phi these are two angle variables and uh, l the values of l varies from 0 1 2 3 like that and ml values varies from minus l to plus l through 0 so different for different values of l and ml different type of spherical harmonics are possible here is a representation of different types of ml uh, spherical harmonic functions when the l value is 0 and ml value is 0 the spherical harmonic functions is a simple function it is independent of theta and phi and uh, the um, it is only a constant quantity it is given as 1 over root over 4 pi when l value is 1 and ml value is 0 when l value is 1 ml value can be minus 1 0 or plus 1 when l value is 1 ml value is 0 the spherical harmonics looks like 3 over 4 pi root over or um, power uh, raised to the power half cos theta when it is l is equal to 1 and ml is equal to plus or minus 1 then it is given as sin it is a function of sin theta e to the power plus or minus i phi similarly when l is equal to 2 and ml is equal to 0 it depends upon uh, it varies with respect to cos square theta minus 1 and like that all the functions are there so it is important to note that theta function varies from 0 to pi whereas phi function varies from 0 to 2 pi. Now uh, the spherical harmonics are eigen functions of, of time independent Schrodinger wave equation. This uh, spherical harmonic satisfy the, the, satisfy the time independent Schrodinger equation. Therefore they represent standing waves. Standing waves means their nodal position does not change with respect to time means uh, this spherical harmonies uh, represent a, rep represent themselves as standing waves on surface of sphere and in which the nodal position does not change with respect to time when it is a progressive wave or when it is it is a progressing wave then only the nodal position change with respect to time but when it is a standing wave the nodal position um, is uh, const it does not change with respect to time now there is one more important point when ml value is zero the spherical harmonic is a real function when ml value is not equal to 0 the spherical harmonics are complex functions now when we plot graph of this uh, spherical harmonics it is difficult to plot a graph for a complex function because they need double the number of dimension than that of the real function so it is always difficult for to graph these uh, spherical harmonic functions so to get rid of this complicacy we can take a linear combination appropriate linear combination of very various spherical harmonics to generate real functions the spherical harmonics are not real functions for ml is not when ml is not equal to 0 so to get real functions we have to take linear combinations so that we can plot appropriate graph when you take linear combinations we can we, we say p linear combination and d linear combination the notation p and d is derived from the atomic orbital hydrogen atomic orbital that is p linear combination means those linear combination will represent p orbital d linear combination means those linear combination will represent d orbital okay now when l value is 0 when l value is 0 ml value will be 0 and that will be real function and that corresponds to s orbital when l value is 1 ml value can have minus 1 0 or plus 1 and that corresponds to p orbital when l value is 2 ml can have minus 2 minus 1 0 plus 1 and plus 2 and that corresponds to d orbital okay so when l value is 1 and ml value is 0 the the, the eigen functions corresponds to p g orbital when it is uh, um, when ml l value is 1 and ml value is 1 and minus 1 both uh, then we can get px and py orbital but we have to take different linear combination when both the functions are added we get px orbital and when both the functions are subtracted we get py orbital this 1 over root 2 and 1 over root 2 i root 2 are uh, this i should be i is uh, wrongly written here i should not be here so this 1 over root 2 is 
the normalization constant of this uh, linear combination okay so this uh, this graph depicts the graphical representation of px py and pg orbital it is important to note that px orbital has a nodal plane nodal plane along yz nodal plane in yz plane P, pg pg orbital has a nodal plane along xy or xy plane and py has a nodal plane along xz plane okay so one one nodal plane is there similarly when l value is 2 we get d linear combinations to get to represent d orbitals we have to take linear combinations for uh, different spherical harmonics when l value is 2 when l value is 2 ml value will have 5 values 5 minus 2 minus 1 0 plus 1 and plus 2 when l value is 2 and ml value is 0 that will be dz square orbital dz square orbital dz square orbital is uh, represented in this graphical notation similarly when when ml value is 2 and l value is 1 either it is plus 1 or minus 1 that will give dxz and dyz orbital okay when when both the functions are added it will give dxz orbital and when both the functions are subtracted it will give um, yz orbital similarly when ml value ML, L value is 2 and ML value is either plus 2 or minus 2 then I appropriate linear combination when they are added up it will give dx square minus y square orbital and when they are subtracted it will give dxy orbital okay so these are the orbitals their uh, graphical representation and the uh, appropriate uh, nodal planes associated with them the for d orbitals there are two nodal planes associated for each d orbitals the two nodal planes are associated then we will look into look into the spatial quantization of angular momentum uh, so far we have discussed that the spherical harmonics are eigen functions for total energy operator square of angular momentum operator and angular momentum operator along z direction and both the three operators that is uh, hamiltonian operator square of angular momentum and angular momentum operator along z axis are commute commuting operators means hamiltonian will commute with commute with square of angular momentum square of angular momentum will commute with angular momentum along z direction hamiltonian will also commute with angular momentum along z direction so as the three operators are commuting operators so the eigen function the spherical harmonics are eigen functions for all the three operators now when spherical harmonics act on hamiltonian operator we get energy when spherical harmonics act on square of angular momentum will take will get the magnitude of angular momentum and what is the energy value the energy value that we have obtained is h bar square over 2i l into l plus 1 what is the eigen value when it acts on when the spherical harmonics acts on the square of angular momentum the energy eigen value is h bar square l into l plus 1 so only the angular angular magnitude of angular momentum will be root over so h bar l into l plus 1 now when the spherical harmonics acts on this uh, angular momentum along g axis what is the eigen value that we get the eigen value that we get is ml h bar ml h cross or ml h bar okay so when it acts on the square of angular momentum we get uh, h bar h bar uh, h bar l into l plus 1 root over that is the magnitude of angular momentum and its uh, z g components are given as ml h cross now the spherical harmonics do are not are are not the eigen functions for angular momentum along x axis and along y axis because they don't commute with each other similarly the spherical harmonics is not an eigen function for the normal angular momentum okay because all the three operators don't commute with each other so we cannot know the angular momentum what is the um, magnitude of angular momentum along x axis and along y axis so uh, this is a pictorial representation when l is equal to 2 when l is equal to 2 uh, the ml can have values minus 2 to plus 2 through 0 so there are five values of ml possible so um, uh, along the g, g axis along the g axis we can re, uh, the uh, component of angular momentum can be known for three for five different values of ml so what is the magnitude of angular momentum the magnitude of angular momentum is given as root over of l into l plus 1 h bar okay 
so for for this particular example for this particular figure l value is 2 now what is the uh, component of angular momentum along g direction the component there will be five component of angular momentum along g direction and that will be minus 2 h cross minus h cross this is 0 then h cross then this is 2 h cross okay now the angular momentum along x and y axis y y direction is not known the um, the value of angular momentum along y y uh, y direction and x direction is not known but uh, one thing we know the sum the sum of angular the sum of angular momentum square the sum of square of angular momentum along x x direction and L, along y direction is known because we know that the angular momentum square is given as lx square ly square plus lg square we know l square what is l square l square is l into l plus 1 h bar square or h bar square what is lg square lg square is ml square h square h bar square because we know only lg what is lg that is the angular momentum along g, g direction that is ml h cross now what is lg square ml square h square so when you subtract l square from um, when you subtract lg square from l square we can find out sum of l square lx square plus ly square that is square of angular momentum along x direction and square of angular momentum along y direction we cannot know we don't know the independent individual angular momentum along x and y we can only know that square of angular momentum for along x x uh, x direction plus square of angular momentum along y direction now when you plot this when you plot this function it defines a circle terminating and the cone at its open end means uh, this and this type of uh, behavior shows a conical type of function so for, again for l is equal to 2 we have five different values of ml so five different cones are obtained when ml is equal to 0 it is not a cone rather it is a ring type of thing okay now there is an important point to know to note for large value of l when l value is large will have mean 2l plus 1 values of ml when you plot all these all these graphs all these values of ml for a particular large value of l then what will happen the individual cones are so close together that they merge into a sphere for a large value these cones will merge into a sphere and the angular momentum vector no longer seems to exhibit spatial quantization here we have uh, obtained the uh, quantization of angular momentum along g direction we have resolved the we have obtained the various components of angular momentum along g direction for l is equal to 2 there are five components are possible but for large values of l we cannot do that because the the components are so close that the total when we take when we resolve them it looks like a spear itself so with this i'll stop here thank you